Samata with New York Broadway Tours. We are about to go inside Sardi's where we are going to interview the Broadway legendary, amazing musical theater actress, singer, and performer, Mary Testa. Stay tuned. We are New York Broadway Tours and I'm sitting here with Mary Testa. Yay. She's an amazing musical theater actress and performer. Um, I am starstruck. I am, I'm starstruck. <laughs> and uh, we're having coffee at Sardi's. And if you've ever been on my tour, you're gonna get a chance to learn all about Sardi's on that. Two time Tony Award nominee for On the Town. On the Town and at 42nd and, uh, Street. 42nd Street, yes. Which I saw you in. Oh, you did? Before I even moved to New York. Wow. I was here, visit, we were visiting New York, and I saw it, and I kept the program. And later on, years later, when I actually saw you at Planet Connections, this is where I actually got to see you up close and doing Howling Hilda, I recognized your name, and I was like, I know this name, I know her. You had blown me away. Oh, how nice. And Thank I you. remembered it, and I kept it kept in my playbill. <laughs> Uh, that, do you keep playbills? I do. <laughs> I, but I started to not after a while. I was like, it's so many. <laughs> There's so many. I keep one playbill from every show I do. Okay. And I keep it in order. Um, you know, maybe someday somebody will care. But I keep them all in order from, they started in 1973, mm -hmm. from when I was in college. And they're just all in order. I've like five boxes full of playbills. Oh, that's Just so one cool. playbill so that someday I'll be able to sit and go, oh, I did this, then I did this, then I did this. Just, just yeah, a program. Playbill, not like That's a set it. piece no, or a costume no. piece because I used to no, do that. No, <laughs> I've taken, I've had stuff from shows. Like I have my shoes mm -hmm. from um, On the Town because they were fabulous. Yeah. I don't wear them, um, but they are they were fabulous designs because it was set in the 40s. Mm -hmm. So I have my shoes from that. I have my shoes from 42nd Street. Um, I have a little flask that it was given to me from Queen of the Mist, which is an off-Broadway show I did. Yes, um, it's fantastic. I have a couple of things like that, but I, no, you know, I don't really collect it as a, as a rule. <laughs> so how, how did the collaboration of the album get started? Well, Michael Starbin and I have been working together since, we met in 1978. Oh my gosh. Uh, doing In Trousers, Wilkins In Trousers. It was the first show Michael orchestrated. So we <laughs> met there, and then our first show we did in 82 was called No Shame. And because our schedules are crazy, we don't always get together to work, but mm -hmm. we enjoy collaborating together because we have a similar sensibility, we have the same musical taste. And so, over the years we've done four shows. Uh, the first was No Shame, the second one was called Sleepless Variations, the third was called Classically Speaking, and then Have Faith. Um, <clears throat> Have Faith came about because Every show we do, Michael likes to do like two or three electronic song, uh, songs, so we decided to put all our electronic stuff together and make a show. We were going to call it Electronica, uh -huh. and um, it started to take on sort of a resonance, and um, the Have Faith was born, and then we had done the show at 54 Below, and then we had done it at uh, as a one-night benefit for Transport Group, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine came to see it. Her name is Catherine Rush. She's a playwright. Cappy Rush, she's called. Mm -hmm. And she said, we, I would love to see this as an album. And, and we said we would too, but it's a very expensive process and we're not going to yeah. do it ourselves. And she did it for us, oh, okay. which was beyond. So we have this glorious album now. And this, is, to our this is your first album that you have created. It's my first solo. Well, it's solo. Michael and I. I'm, yeah. the, I'm the singer, but it's Michael and I. Michael and my work. Mm -hmm. but yes, I'm on a million cast albums. It's my first solo. Yeah, that's what I would, because I was looking and I'm like, what, what else has she done? I know she's done other things. And oh, yeah. so I went to Amazon, you know, and they were like, and you might like this and this and this. And I was like, but this is her first. This is her baby. That's my solo. Yes, yeah. it is my baby. It's Michael and my baby. Yeah. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you so that's, much. That is a huge accomplishment. It's yeah, amazing. we're very, very, very proud of it. Every note, every nuance, everything on that album is our choice and our taste and mm -hmm. our what we want on there. So there was absolutely no compromise, which was great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, I think it's a pretty stunning album. So we're very I do proud too. of it. I love it. So you have this amazing belt to operatic sound. Mm -hmm. And so my question as a performer is, did you train I did. operatically? I've always had, yes I did. Um, I've always had a natural voice, but 
when I moved to the city, I worked with an opera teacher for about six years, uh, who only had opera students except for me. And so I did learn opera technique just as far as, you know, uh, I never sang opera, but just as far as strengthening the voice and stuff like that. So um, I thought that was important because yeah. that's... But I, I'm not an opera singer, nor do I want to be, but that's the way I trained. But you totally could do, and you well, have. I, yeah, I like to use all areas of my voice and all different styles and all different ways. So mm -hmm. opera training sort of strengthens you and, and makes you understand how to sing so you don't hurt yourself. Because belting is one thing, but you know, when you're in your 20s, you can belt really high, but as you start to age, that's not a good idea for your voice. So you have to start mixing and putting stuff in head voice, and you know you have to know where in your voice that's the best place to go. You know what I mean? To mix or to put it in your head. So that's where opera training comes in. Did you know that you were a character actress? Well, I've always been a character actress because um, you know I just have, have always, a character. Well, I just have always been a character actress. Well, even when I was young, I was yeah. always up against women in their 40s for roles when I was in my 20s. And I've just always been a character. They don't consider me a leading lady type. I and mean, you're always going to run into those walls of people wanting to stereotype, you know, who you are. And that's just what the business is. But, yeah. you know, that's where your own work comes in and that's where doing your own thing comes in, you know. Then no one can categorize it because it's not theirs. You do, you've done a lot. You've done like a lot of everything. Mm -hmm. you've, you've done, off, you started off-Broadway? I've done a ton of off-Broadway, <laughs> ton of Broadway, television, film, concert yeah. work. I've done everything. Do you do you have like a, pref a preference of? Um, I like doing prefer? everything. No, I like being able to do everything. Yeah. Um, I, I think if I just did musicals, I would not be happy. Mm -hmm. And so I like to do plays, and I like to do everything. You know, I like the variety. And that's why you won. I, I'm just gonna say it. I think. The, the Drama Desk Award. I they won gave the Drama you a Desk. special award yes. in recognition of three decades performing on and off Broadway. And for Queen of the Mist. And it Queen was for Mist. Queen of the Mist, really. I think they gave me the award because, this is my supposition, but I would have been in the same category as Audra. So I think they were like, she really needs to win for this, but if we put her with Audra, she's not going to win. So oh. we will give her our own. <laughs> That's what I think. But you totally deserve it. I did deserve it, actually, for Queen of the Mist. I'll yeah. tell you that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm thrilled. It was a thrilling, lovely, great honor. Great honor to That's receive so cool. that award. And Bill Finn uh, presented me with the award, so that's great because he's an old pal. and Because you know. he's the one that, that was uh, uh, started. Trousers, right? That's In the Trousers, first, the first yeah. One. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. Any of our fans have questions for Mary Testa? Um, you know, do you have like any advice that you would, would give to our up and coming well, Broadway? Yeah, I just stars? say just keep going. You know, the whole thing, one of the biggest things in this business is just to persevere and keep going. It's a difficult business in that there's a lot of rejection and there's a lot of people saying, no, you're not what we want. And mm -hmm. it's that can really wear you down if you're, if you don't take, you can't take it personally, even though it's, it's all about you because you're the product mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a difficult business you have to believe in yourself and you have to just keep moving forward and that's really the only thing you can keep doing and just keep learning and growing and, and experiencing new things you're so awesome oh. this one happened yes yes <laughs> From the words of Mary Testa, you guys. Thanks. This is awesome. Now, I do have another question. Um, I see your pictures up here. Yeah. Next to Is it Whoopi? Yeah, because we're friends, and, and, and Jonathan Freeman's on the other side of me because we're friends, and Annie Golden's up there because we're all friends. So they put it all up. With, they put us all up together. Let me just show you guys. I got that for uh, 42nd Street. Look, there she is. <laughs> Yay, with her friend Whoopi. Nanny and Annie. And Jonathan on the other side. And John. Yay, Yay. thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>